And I want to go back to an issue that we talked about at the very start of the show. Today, science and industry minister Ed Husick doubled down on his stance that workers, including journalists, doctors, actors, should be able to sympathize with Palestine without fear or favor of professional retribution. But that's not all. Speaking on ABC Radio, the Labour MP also said that anybody, that people who were showing concern for the Palestinians faced, quote, unquote, our generation of McCarthyism. Have a quick listen to this. People should be able to express their concern and stand with humanity and say that they have, uh, that they, they are very concerned about what they're seeing in Gaza and they shouldn't have to face professional retribution uh, as a response. To discuss all this, I'm joined by former Labor MP Michael Danby and Sky News host James McPherson. Uh, James, I want to get your take on this, first of all. I mean, free speech is something that we hear bandied around an awful lot. But McCarthyism, that seems like a pretty nutty thing to say. Yeah, I mean, we've got people yelling, gas the Jews. We've got mobs throwing rocks at synagogues in Caulfield and storming hotels because Jews are staying in the Melbourne CBD. But the real problem, James, is actors not being able to use their platform to spew hatred against the Jews. It's an absurd proposition. But good on Ed Husick, a member of the left, for suddenly discovering free speech. I wonder if he'll defend the rights of, say, doctors to speak against gender fluidity without being reported to HR. I wonder if he'll go that far or they only certain forms of free speech that well, he defends. James, let's not get so extreme there. I mean, we know there are limits to these sorts of things, and saying that a man can't get pregnant, that is just course, that's absolutely too beyond far. the pale. Michael Damby, I want to bring you in here on the, pro, on the, on the chat here. Um, Ed Husek specifically talked about journalists, and he said that journalists who signed a petition about war coverage, siding with the Palestinians, were then pulled off coverage over fears that they would be biased, but I've read the letter, and the letter is really, really just a piece of activist propaganda. It talks about apartheid and genocide, and it doesn't talk anything about any of the context of uh, Jewish history, modern or ancient, in Israel. And it doesn't talk about the civilizational challenge of uh, the Hamas mass rapes. How dare these left-wing uh, journalists and, and Ed Husick back them uh, when they say nothing about this. Just like the UN Security Council couldn't mention the Hamas attacks when they call for the ceasefire. This whole uh, uh, event in the Middle East is showing in the Western world the degree of hypocrisy that some people have. James outlined it uh, perfectly, uh, Husick's double standards. He's a disappointment as a minister. He should have uh, not stopped... Uh, Australian satellite uh, programs that Greg Sheridan has pointed out is so important for our military defence. But, uh, you know, the bloke who was uh, uh, taken out of the ABC uh, and sent to, to, to Turkey uh, was exposed by Sophie Ellsworth as claiming that the uh, rapes uh, and the uh, baby uh, killings didn't happen. So, you know, he deserved his fate for being unprofessional and making a judgment about things he couldn't have known. And it, how crazy is it for Ed Husick sitting in Canberra to defend that? Mm. Indeed. And I want to continue this discussion here with another element to this. And this is what's happening over at Harvard and many universities in the United States, where in the woke American education system, we saw last week the presidents of three elite Ivy universities grilled over growing anti-Semitism at their schools. Now, the responses went viral, and the president of one of the schools, University of Pennsylvania, was forced to resign. Uh, James McPherson, there's also been calls for the other two to resign. I have it on very good authority that Claudine Gay, who was the Harvard pre uh, president, yep. who said that these things needed to be put in context when deciding whether a call for genocide was hate speech, She's going to survive. Michael mentioned a very important word before, civilization. What is happening to our civilization when one of the you know, most important sort of things, this top-leading university, can't even 
manage moral clarity mm. on an issue like this? Well, the anti-Semitism that we saw from those university presidents, and it was shocking, but it's merely a manifestation of a deeper problem within our tertiary institutions, and that is for a long time they've not become places of inquiry, but places of indoctrination. Gender theory, critical race theory, um, demonisation of Western culture, and so it's going to take a lot more than a few resignations to change what is a deep-seated culture within our universities. It's going to take a full uprooting of diversity, inclusion, equity, that whole woke indoctrination of young people who will be our future leaders. And we're, we're at a pivotal moment here where we've got a chance to do something about it. It's been exposed and it needs to be dealt with with more than just a couple of resignations at the top. And Michael, we've really seen this sort of thing playing out too in some universities, not as bad in the United States, but we've certainly seen incidences on campus and even in high schools and primary schools what is the solution to uprooting this sort of woke DEI mind virus that allows anti-Semitism and all sorts of other bizarre thoughts into the classrooms uh, and generating these ideas into future generations? Curiously, I think that what happens in the United States will um, make people here react in a different way. So if... Um, uh, Harvard gets rid of uh, their president and, and replaces her with their old uh, former uh, director, Larry Summers, who's a, 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 and he runs a broom through the whole institution, as James and you have described the reasons for. It's not just uh, this uh, anti-Semitism issue. You've got to get rid of all of these DEI uh, woke um, crazies um, if you're going to clean up the institution. But it's worse, James. I congratulate you on your fantastic program on America. Saturday Night Live ran a, uh, a program in favour of uh, uh, the... Uh, the Harvard professor and, and was mocking the Republican Stefanik. I mean, it's it's seeped into television and into the wider culture. If it can be defeated in America, hopefully it can be uh, brought to heel here. Very well said, Michael. And James, just very quick reaction. The Australia Day celebration has been brought back at the London High Commission, your reaction, why did it happen in the first place? Because they got caught, James. That's why it happened, because <laughs> there was such an uproar, they thought we'd better backtrack. We're in enough trouble as it is with the polls without upsetting more people. They got caught.